that time I stayed, you know, three, four or five seconds. So I increase the time in small increments so I know the horse knows the right answer is to stand still. If I jump on this horse and stay on here until he moves, rears, bucks, or gets scared, then he thinks the only way to get me off is if I move. I don't want him thinking that. I have to think like a horse and say, if you jump on me, I don't move. Since 1938, the parade of horses, cowboys, and cowgirls has marked the beginning of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Lots of horses. You like that? You like that? It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Because I'm going to ride them when they get bigger. The horse riders gather in different parts of Texas, some of them hundreds of kilometers away. They ride into Houston and camp overnight. For Santos Cruz, this is a chance to connect with the past. I wanted to have a feeling of how our ancestors had to cross this prairie at one time or another, you know? When they, there was no cars. Gerald Barkley and his friend, Donald Kimball, come to Houston every year and meet with friends they have made on the trail rides. We all get together and enjoy each other, and which some of us hadn't seen each other in a year. So that brings out all the good to me. They promote this way of life, so you know, it doesn't you know, fade away. moves his lip kind of like just hangs there like it's damaged or injured a horse on drugs will have that droopy saggy bottom lip um, I, I don't like telling somebody when I'm coming out or the day before if somebody wants all that you know specific information before you come see their horse then I'm thinking uh, they're probably up to something because if I got a horse I don't really care if I'm trying to sell a horse I don't care when you come I don't care what happens I can go out and catch my horse. I'd rather watch somebody go kiss their horse. I'd rather them watch them tie them up. I'd rather watch them groom them and pick their feet and see what. I want to go out and see if they had good, clean water and the horse is cared for. The facility where your horse is kept, you can tell a lot on how well the horse is cared for. But, again, there's the exception. You can have a great facility that's cared for in the world. You've got a bunch of people <laughs> going to the door and they don't pay any attention to the horse. They just keep their facility nice. So, That's a lot of pee. <laughs> uh, you're just not going to be able to tell if a horse is good by going and seeing him. First of all, the first rule of any horse lesson is don't believe anything anybody tells you. 
okay, if somebody tells you this horse is broke, this horse is this, I don't care. So if the horse can tie, then tie him and show me. If you can pick the horse's feet, then pick them. <laughs> are really far and he's gonna drop and he's gonna pee and he's looking for a spot that wouldn't splash uh, he has a drink water all day his pee's a little yellow I don't like how yellow his pee is oh yeah that's just uh, he should have more water it tells me a little dehydrated he'll probably get a big drink when we go back home we've been out here filming videos all day but he's nice and his legs are spread <laughs> and uh, I guess he's not gonna roll <laughs> so anyway um, what to look for when you buy a horse. You just want to look, is the horse Whoa, been handled? No, 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 no. Is he comfortable? Hey. Uh, if I handle Buddy, he's going to be a lot more handled. Where are you going, Bud? Alright, I lost my horse. Oh, shit, there's another horse over there. I don't want him to go get in trouble. Let me get a carrot. Yeah, I'm what standing over here by the stump. This is what people say. That horse is carrot sour. That horse ain't carrot sour. It's nice and easy to catch him because I was able to bring him back. I know. I didn't know those horses were out there. I know. Oh my goodness. You guys are just starving. You guys are going to collect your horses. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tie Buddy up so he don't get in trouble when he's on my carrots here. But what, what are you looking for when you buy a horse? You're looking for hand, handleability. Is the horse handled? handled? Can you handle him? Can he be led? Can he follow? Does he give to pressure? Will he walk in and out of a trailer easy? Uh, ask the person who owns him to show you what the horse can do. Can they stand up on him? Can they walk underneath him? Can they get underneath him and check his legs? Can they pick up all four feet? Can they grab his tail and pull on it? All these things tell you the horse has been handled. All these things tell you the horse is probably safe. If you got a person that's got a horse tied up and they're like, there's the horse, oh, I don't have a whole lot of time, uh, you can check him out and I'll be back later, you've probably got issues. Uh, if, if somebody's selling a horse and, and, they're, and they're being honest, this horse should be, you know, you should be able to get underneath it, climb it, check it, rub it, check its feet, look underneath it for injuries, um, and you don't have to do any of this. If somebody's telling you to do this, you need to tell them, no, you do it. If you want to sell the horse, you show me the horse can do it. Don't be afraid to have somebody do some things to a horse. Ask the person, I want you to see this horse tied. I want to see you pick the horse's feet out. Well, I haven't picked him out in a while. I got a bad back. I can't. I've heard all these damn excuses in the world on how on people that don't know what they're doing, they're like, oh, he's a nice guy. It's a nice horse. He just couldn't pick his feet because he had a bad back. He couldn't lead him because the horse had a hurt ear. He couldn't find his halter so he couldn't tie him. And he didn't have a trailer so he couldn't trail load him. But the horse does all this perfect. All right, if you're a dummy and you bought a horse, then you deserve a horse. I'm telling you, when you go out and buy a horse, you need to be skeptical. You need to be, you know what, I'm from Missouri, show me. Anything this horse can do, you need to show me. And if you can't show me, then I don't believe it. And I don't care how many people you got there, whether you got friends, nieces, nephews, daughters, and all these people end up saying, oh yeah, the horse will do all that. No. Show me. It, can you handle this horse? Can you be around this horse? Does this horse flinch if you raise your hand? Does this horse flinch if I bang my hat? Is this horse look like he's been around people and he listens or he respects people and he's responsive to people? Uh, all those things are important and, and does that mean you're going to get a good horse? I, I don't think there's a bad horse out there. Um, are, are any of those tips going to make you a better horse buyer? About the only thing that's going to make you a better horse buyer is don't believe anything anybody tells you and you know, judge from what you see. Make the person ride the horse. Make the person do what you want to do with the horse. Make the horse, make the person pick the feet because you're going to have to do that. Make the person worm him. Make the person uh, rub his ears. Make the person groom him. 
make the person do things that you're going to have to do because if the person that owns them can't do it, I can almost guarantee you're not going to be able to do it. Now, should that mean you shouldn't buy it? No. Uh, the lady in her question said, well, what about diamonds in the rough? How do you know if you get a diamond in the rough? All horses are diamond in the rough. All horses are wild or have been taught bad lessons. They're all diamonds in a rough. Any horse can be a diamond. If it's polished right, if it's treated right, but you have to know what you're doing. You have to spend time. You have to invest effort, time, knowledge, experience. All that has to go in, and that's what makes good horses. That's what makes diamonds. Not going out, getting lucky, and picking a diamond. If the horse was such a diamond, they probably wouldn't be selling it. If it was such a diamond, they'd probably be asking more for it. So, you know, for them to say, well, this is a really special horse, and they're bleeding and bloodlines, and what about bloodlines? Shouldn't you check bloodlines? Bloodlines don't mean jack to me. I don't your care horse about them. I think they're overbred. I think if a horse with bloodlines is probably a worse okay horse because they breed them for everything be. but feet. <laughs> and most overbred horses have bad so, feet or have bad here. problems. They breed them for walk size him. and weight. And if this was a new horse, I wouldn't just walk back behind his horse, grab his tail, and start pulling on it. Because I'd probably get kicked. And then you can't ride I'd probably blame the horse and say the horse kicked me for no reason. No, he had plenty of reasons. So if I want to get a horse used to me being behind him, I want to massage him and sack him out, make sure he knows that I can be around his legs, make sure that I can get back here. I should be picking out his feet. I should be doing all kinds of things with this horse from back here so I know when I'm behind him that it's not odd. It's not strange. He's used to me picking up his feet. He's used to me being back here. He's used to me lifting his tail and rubbing and scratching him, rubbing underneath his tail. These are all things that you want to get a horse comfortable with so when somebody does walk by and accidentally brush him, he's not going to kick them. Uh, so to get a horse comfortable back here, you've got to spend time back here. You can't expect a horse to be comfortable with you behind him when you're always standing at his shoulder. He's or you're always nervous when you get back here. Or every time out. you come back here, I want him to learn how to step on that. And I did it without my saddle because I don't want to wear it over and break my saddle. So I did this yesterday, or day before yesterday, one time. Look at this horse. He's nervous. He's telling me he's insecure. He's looking around. The wind's blowing. There's a lot of things going on for this horse. He has a rope hanging. He's got the saddle on him. I'm letting this horse get used. I want a horse, before I ever try to get in a saddle, I want him to think that saddle's part of him. I want him to totally ignore that saddle. I want him, when these stirrups pop, good boy. I know, I'm gonna come here and pop this stirrup. I want him to know when that thing pop, good boy, we're good boy, he's a good buddy. He knows to follow me because he doesn't get pressure. Good boy, good boy, I know. So he's gonna go ahead and walk off. He's gonna step on that rope. Good. That's what I wanted. That's somebody be like, oh, save him. Oh, don't. You you gotta help. That's dangerous, Rick. You shouldn't. This horse has to learn how to give the pressure. He has to learn when his head gets dropped and he steps on a rope that it's okay. He's he doesn't have to blow up. I want him to step.